You've probably heard people call YK, 11 the most powerful SARM ever made, a muscle building miracle, a genetic hack. But here's the twist, YK, 11 isn't technically even SARM. Welcome back to SARM Sport, the place where we separate science from gym myths. Today, we're talking about the so-called super SARM, how it works, what it does, and whether it's really worth the hype or the risk. So grab your coffee or your protein shake, and let's dig in. YK-11 was developed back in 2011 by a Japanese researcher named Yu Hirata. Originally, it was designed as part of a study on selective androgen receptor modulators, compounds meant to mimic testosterone in a more targeted way. But YK-11 turned out to be something else entirely. Chemically, it's steroid-based, much closer to dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, than to classic SARMs like Osterine or LGD-4033. That's why it's often called a hybrid molecule, part SARM, part steroid. And that's also why its effects are strong, but unpredictable. If SARMs were designed to be clean versions of testosterone, YK-11 is that one cousin who didn't get the memo. So what makes YK-11 special? Unlike other SARMs that simply activate androgen receptors, YK-11 takes things further. It inhibits myostatin, a protein that literally stops your muscles from growing beyond a certain point. Think of myostatin as the brake pedal on muscle growth. YK-11 takes that foot off the brake. At the same time, it boosts folostatin, another protein that fights myostatin naturally. That combination, myostatin down, folostatin up, theoretically unlocks massive muscle growth potential. On paper, it sounds like a cheat code for hypertrophy. In practice, we only have cell culture and mouse data, no verified human studies. So it's promising, but still in the we have no idea what it does long-term category. Now, let's talk about what people say they feel, because most of what we know comes from users, not from labs. Reports from athletes and bodybuilders go something like this, fast muscle growth, especially in shoulders, chest, and arms. Noticeable strength increase. A dry, dense muscle look without water retention. Sounds amazing, right? But again, most of these claims come from online forums and Reddit threads, not medical journals. And when your source is a guy on the internet, you should probably take it with a scoop of skepticism and maybe creatine. Now, here's where things get less glamorous. Since YK, 11 is a DHT-derived compound, you can expect some androgenic side effects. Things like acne, irritability, oily skin, and accelerated hair loss. There's also concern about liver toxicity, especially with longer cycles. And make no mistake, YK-11 can suppress natural testosterone production. That means yes, you'll need post-cycle therapy, PCT, if you use it. And here's the biggest red flag. No clinical studies confirm its safety, so you're basically running a real-world experiment on yourself. If classic SARMs are a science project, YK-11 is more like playing chemistry set in your kitchen. Typical user reports suggest 5 to 10 milligrams per day for about 4 to 8 weeks. The half-life seems to be around 6 hours, so many users split the dose, morning and evening. But here's the deal, more isn't better. Pushing past 10 milligrams won't double your results, it'll just double your side effects. And because this compound is so untested, it's not for beginners. YK, 11 should never be your first cycle. It's something people experiment with only after they already understand SARMs, blood work, and recovery protocols. Think of it as a sports car with no seat belts. Fast, fun, but unforgiving. So what does the science say? Not much. No published human clinical trials exist. The few studies we have are in vitro or in mice. And while they show muscle building potential, they don't tell us anything about long-term safety, hormonal impact, or organ stress. That's why most experts classify YK-11 as a gray area compound. It's powerful, but it's not well understood, and that's never a good mix. So, is YK-11 the super SARM people claim it is? Kind of, but not for the reasons they think. It's potent, it's experimental, and it might offer real anabolic benefits. But without clinical data, every user is basically a test subject. If SARMs are the smart steroids, then YK-11 is the mad scientist version Fascinating, but dangerous. Bottom line, don't chase extreme results with unknown compounds. Chase knowledge, discipline, and long-term health. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more deep dives into the science behind performance enhancement.